Hi, I'm Dr. Jennifer Sorrell, and I am a board-certified adult and pediatric dermatologist here at California Skin Institute in San Mateo, in San Francisco, California. So there are lots of different types of acne. Um, I like to categorize them into comedonal acne, so that's blackheads and whiteheads, so your tiny or fine pimples. And then there's also more inflammatory pimples, and so those are more pink bumps or pustules, and sometimes people have combinations of both. Acne is really common, so I see acne in, I think, over 85% of teenagers, but acne can sometimes follow us into our adult years as well, too. There's lots of different triggers for acne. No one can tell you 100% why somebody gets acne, um, but there's lots of different factors that we know can play a role. Um, so genetics can play a factor. So if somebody in your family has a lot of acne or more severe acne, then you can be a little bit more prone to getting acne as well too. Also, everybody would love it to just be one food, and I wish it was one food. It would make my job really simple to say, oh, just cut out broccoli and your problem is solved. But there are some dietary measures we can think about that can make acne a little bit more active. So for example, dairy, and specifically milk. And so there have been studies done that show that actually 1% in skim milk can lead to people having more acne than even a whole milk or 2% milk, which is kind of interesting. I also tell my patients that they found more acne in people who have a high glycemic index diet. So those are foods that raise your blood sugar quickly. So carbohydrates, fried foods, fried sugary foods, uh, those are all things that can make acne a little bit more active. And one thing that I've noted more recently are protein shakes. And so I actually tell my team that I'm working on figuring out what protein is the main driving cause but I've definitely had patients be clear and then acne coming back and I ask what's going on and they're having more protein shakes um, pre-workout. So those are things that I tell patients to avoid. There are lots of different treatments for acne. And so I usually have people, um, if your acne is very mild, you know, you have a few pimples here or there, we can think about some over-the-counter spot treatments. Something really simple like a benzoyl peroxide containing gel or a salicylic acid containing gel. Those can be really helpful if you have a pimple here or there. Also, especially for some of my adult women, I find that a sulfur containing medication can be very drying for a little pimple here or there. Um, one thing that I think has been really helpful um, are something called Mighty Patches, and they have, they're basically a little small hydrocolloid dressing, and they help keep fingers off of the acne to allow the acne to heal quicker, and also helps to dry it up. So I do enjoy using those. I always recommend that you see your board certified dermatologist to help you come out with a plan that works for the type of acne that you have. So for example, if someone's acne is a little bit more mild, um, or they want something simple to start with, a topical retinoid is kind of the gold standard of treatment for topical medications for acne. That's something that you may have heard of like tretinoin or Retin-A. And there's lots of different strengths and we really try to customize the strength based on how active your acne is and also how sensitive your skin is too. Uh, you can imagine if your skin is a little bit more sensitive or tends to be more dry, then we might start with something a little bit milder, give you some extra things to do to help you combat some of the irritation that can be seen with a lot of the Retin-A or retinoid medications. Um, there's also topical antibiotics. Topical antibiotics I really like for more inflammatory pimples. So remember those pink juicier pimples or pustules? I find that topical antibiotics are very helpful. That's things like clindamycin, usually paired with some benzoyl peroxide. We even have some newer products available now that are in different vehicles. Vehicles is what the medicine is put into. And so vehicles are things like lotions or creams or gels. Right now we actually have foams and I'm really loving to use foams on chest and back acne because it penetrates better. Whereas some of the other types of vehicles don't penetrate those areas as well. That's been a real game changer. I also like foams when someone is a little bit more oily and they really need a stronger Retin-A medicine. I've been using a foam version of Retin-A a little bit more as well too, which has been really great. Um, a lot of times people ask me, when's the best time to intervene with acne? And if we can get it early, it's really helpful. It's really important to get acne early because we can prevent some of the scarring changes and even the dark spots that can come as a result of acne. 
right? Sometimes acne comes and nothing's left behind. And if that happens, that's great. But other times acne leaves behind texture change or pigment change. And those things can take a lot of time to improve. And sometimes with scarring, we actually can't make it perfect again. And so I do encourage my patients to seek treatment early so that we can shut that process down with treatment. Um, people sometimes ask me about dark marks that result from old acne as it's gone away. And one of the most important things you can do is to use a non-comedogenic zinc oxide containing sunscreen um, to help prevent further darkening of those marks. Those UVA rays come right through the car windows so every single day, regardless of weather, rainy, cloudy, sunny, foggy, really important to use that zinc oxide containing sunscreen to help lift that pigment. One thing that can be really helpful in lifting some of those dark marks in addition to your zinc oxide containing sunscreen is glycolic acid. California Skin Institute has a lot of glycolic acid containing products that can be really helpful. So um, what should we do if your acne is a little bit moderate to severe or if some of the over-the-counter medications that you've been trying um, aren't working? If you're board-certified dermatologist at California Skin Institute, we can help you find a treatment regimen that works well for you. A lot of times we'll make sure that you're using a topical retin-A medicine or a topical retinoid in addition to a topical antibiotic. Many times um, I'll beef it up a little bit to an oral antibiotic as well. That'll really help jumpstart your treatment regimen so that things can move along a little bit faster. For my adult women and for my older young ladies and girls, we also have hormonal treatments that are very reasonable. Topical hormonal treatments, but also oral hormonal treatments like the birth control pill or hormonal control as I like to call it, and also oral spironolactone. Those are real game changers for hormonal acne. Lastly, I will often use oral isotretinoin to help calm down a severe acne patient. Oral isotretinoin, sorry, oral isotretinoin has several indications. One being severe or scarring acne, but the other being acne that's recalcitrant to a typical regimen. And so that's a great option. We usually will do a six to nine month course depending on your provider, and that has the best chances of making your acne go away and stay away. It's really important to know that if you are trying to conceive or if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, there are still great options for you that are safe for your baby. Um, we usually use maybe some lower strength glycolic acid, some topical antibiotic therapies, or in more severe cases, there are some by mouth antibiotics that are safe to use during pregnancy. It's just really important to let your provider know um, if you are pregnant or trying to get pregnant or breastfeeding so that we can come up with the best treatment regimen for you. There's also some alternative treatments. We can do things like light treatment that includes blue light treatment or in some cases red light treatment to help with the more inflammatory pimples. I've also had my patients meet with our esthetician occasionally to help us figure out are there some peels, some of the lower strength glycolic acid peels are very reasonable during those special times like pregnancy, breastfeeding, um, and trying to conceive that are safe. Yeah, so um, a lot of my patients do have some scarring or texture change left behind after the acne is quiet. And we do have lots of great options. One of my favorite options, if you wanted something topical, is a topical retin-A, a retinoid that's a little bit stronger to do some mild resurfacing. If we wanted something a little bit more aggressive, we actually can use a resurfacing laser called Fraxel. It pokes little tiny holes deep in the skin that allows the skin to reheal. And over about one to three sessions, we can really see some amazing improvement. It's probably one of my favorite procedures to do for my acne patients because it makes such a big difference. Um, lastly, I often will tell my patients who are on Accutane that at the end of their Accutane course with me, which is usually months seven, eight, and nine, we can actually get some improvement of that texture change at the end of an Accutane course. So I will often keep them on for those final three months just to see that smoothing appearance happen.